Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Valeria and this is the Off-Road Ranch. I said in one of the previous videos that I need a trailer. I talked there about restrictions on waiting capacity it removes, what advantages it provides, financial and logistical, and why I need it. If you don't understand at all who I am and why I'm talking about trailers, then you are welcome to my Vera and first videos where I talk about me and my project. Maybe you will be interested in more than just a trailer. To date, I have analyzed what types of trailers are there on the market where I am, studied the structure and schemes of trailers, their shortcomings, types of operation and methods of modernization. I found forums where I learned about various cases, problems and solutions to them. I consulted mechanics who maintain and use trailers of the same or similar construction in their work. Now I have a vision of my trailer. I cannot say about the features, quality and operation of trailers common in your country. But I will talk about the features of the trailer that are common here, which is also useful, since one way or another they are all the same, and generally their purpose is also the same. But if you find a trailer of a similar type which I will buy for myself, then find out a country of origin and, if necessary, check for weak points. It's not a fact that you are offered to buy a bad option, but everything has peculiarities and vulnerabilities. I will talk about a single axle trailer only designed to transport goods and small vehicles. To start with, this is an ambiguous preservation of category B. In addition, TP mode can be easily implemented for single axle trailers. And furthermore, there is a reasonable load limit for my Jeep. What immediately catches the eye is the body type. The trailer can be with the body itself, with height of 30-40 cm, with a canvas awning or with a plastic cover. Since I will be transporting materials and tools there, a trailer with the body with sides will not suit me. And in general, I have seen few such trailers. If choose between an awning and a plastic cover, then they have their own advantages and disadvantages. For me, a trailer with a plastic cover would be better, since such a cover is more durable and stable. Also, the plastic cover is more streamlined, which reduces the coefficient of aerodynamic drag. But I will buy a trailer with a tarpaulin, since it will fit a larger volume of light cargo and because it is cheaper, and my costs do not allow me to buy a more expensive option. But later, if I have the resources and the need, I will buy a trailer with a plastic cover. In order to reduce the aerodynamic load on the awning, it is made by welt, which is important in terms of weight and speed. But if you load a trailer weighing 100 kg, then most often it doesn't matter if there is a bevel or not. In any case, you don't need to drive more than a speed set by the traffic rules. Trailers vary in width. There is a standard size and there are trailers with a narrow gauge such that it matches the width of the vehicle in front. The advantage of such a width is that the machine creates a track, clears the road and the trailer rides on it. The trailer goes around all obstacles in the same trajectory, doesn't create additional resistance and reduces the likelihood of aquaplaning. Also, in this case, the wheels and fenders are recessed into the base, which also allows to ride with less resistance and less splashing of mud from under the wheels on the awning, on the optics and on nearest cars. The main drawback is that the bottom of the body won't be level, as there are wheel arches. That is, the width of the load that can be placed in the trailer is reduced by 30-40%. This option would suit me if I trailer an ATV or a snowmobile. But I will haul construction materials, so I need a tender gauge trailer. In this case, it must have either the same cross-country ability at my Jeep, or a guarantee that my Jeep will pull it out. This requires certain specifications. Therefore, let's talk about the shortcomings of these trailers and how to eliminate them. 
With the load that is planned by the vehicle path part, the trailer under periodic loads will perform its tasks well and for a long time. But I will drive in the mud, in the snow, in the rain, on the dirt road. And static loading and dynamic loading influence the trailer very different. In statics, the trailer can withstand 1.5 tons, while its real carrying capacity is 750 kilograms, according to the vehicle passport. Also, later I will use it every day. And every day doesn't mean one time per day. Sometimes that means every day for 12 hours, which means more wear and tear. Therefore, I shall consider seriously an option of its upgrading. Friends, I ask you to subscribe and turn on notifications about new videos on my channel. I also ask you to tell your friends about it and ask to subscribe as well if they are interested. I need this in order to get first 10,000 subscribers to have monetization from YouTube. This small financing will allow me to free a few hours a month to make more interesting content for you. And thanks to you, more people will see this interesting and useful content. So, what is subjected to the most stress in the trailer? With the large weight the springs can bend outward, the axles and wheel trunnions can break. Therefore, you need to look what bearings a trailer has, how much weight they can withstand, how well they are lubricated, and how hot they are. Also, sometimes trailer owners reinforce the springs or break the hold the springs. Several times I saw an option with an additional third spring in the center of the trailer, but I don't understand how the physics work there and the calculations were not carried out, although it was claimed that in this way its current capacity was doubled. Perhaps owners were lucky and the trailer somehow drove for some time. Manufacturers often save on metal, and its thickness is barely enough to carry the load, and the frame works to the limit. But strengthening the whole frame with metal welding is not an option, since in this case it is easier to make the trailer myself. If I buy a new trailer, then I need to choose carefully, and in this case the thickness of the frame will be enough to withstand the load, especially with the improved suspension. If I buy a used trailer, then most likely it will be necessary to restore the frame, clean it from rust, treat it with reagents, prime it, and paint it in several layers. Some owners weld additional metal profiles and metal pipes across and along the frame, increasing its resistance to dynamic loads. For now, I don't plan to do this, and I hope it won't be necessary. For better cross-country ability and carrying capacity, most likely I will have to put other wheels, larger or smaller than those provided by the manufacturer. It is necessary that they correlate with those installed on the main car with which they will be used in tandem. This will increase stability and distribute the load more evenly. Also, other wheels must pass through the mud and meth so that the jeep is not loaded even more at the time of towing. In trailers of the type that I saw, the manufacturer often makes terrible electrics, so the wires hang out and are soldered somehow. The same goes for optics. The manufacturer often uses the cheapest Chinese headlights that hang on plastic mounts, let water through and turn off. Therefore, the owners themselves replace the factory electrics with wires with a thicker cross-section, solder well, use braids and heat shrinks, and then isolate and place in corrugations. Some owners lay wires inside the tube of the body frame, but they probably never carried flammable liquids or they were lucky. Because if there is a spark in the trailer, the wires will be too close to the fire especially if the spark burns a hole in the frame. It is most reasonable to place them under the bottom of the trailer, 
minimizing fire. Despite the fact that the wires will be often in the mud, nothing threatens them in corrugation and insulation. Also, I may need to replace the optics, position lamps, running lights, brake lights. I need to signify the vehicle properly in all weather conditions, including being bright enough, being positioned in the right direction, being waterproof, and indicating to other road users that a trailer of the indicated dimensions is moving behind the Jeep. But I will know whether I need to make changes to the electrics and optics only after buying a trailer and testing it in various weather conditions. I need a spare tire to replace in case something happens on the road. In this case, the wheel must be fixed on the trailer so that it doesn't come off when driving. I need wheel chocks. They are needed if the trailer is unstable on an uneven road or if there is any chance at all that it can spontaneously start moving. I probably need sand trucks. In this case, they are needed not only for passing through mud and swampy terrain. Sand trucks will allow me to bring the trailer into the mud, into the swamp or into the sand and leave it unattended for some time, knowing that no one can steal it without risking the tow bar or car bumper, since without sand trucks it will be very difficult to pull the trailer out of mud or sand. I need a warning triangle. This is not always remembered, but it is better to have several of them, especially if the trailer is left because the car leaves for help. Also, in trailers, side locks and various brackets are changed sometimes for greater reliability of cargo securing. Also, metal rings are put on the bottom of the body around the perimeter of the body, so that you can secure the load or pull it towards you by passing a rope through the ring. Sometimes owners make additional light in the trailer. Depending on where and what kind of light is located, it can illuminate the cargo in the back of the body. But it must be remembered that the light means additional electrics that will be attached to the awning and profiles. And the body in a storm will be constantly in motion while driving the car and the trailer. This means that both electrics and optics are subjected to constant friction and shaking, which increases their failure and the occurrence of a short socket. And this means the likelihood of fire and generally additional problems. Therefore, I will solve the issues of additional fastenings, electrics and light when I buy a trailer, study its condition and understand what I need to do and what the trailer allows me to do. It seems that a trailer has a simple construction. It is, but it still needs to be given time and attention so that it performs its functions. It must not endanger other road users on public roads. A combination Jeep and trailer is more dangerous than just a Jeep. And although other drivers will stay away from it, will overtake carefully and will not provoke, road safety depends on the skills of the driver. The trailer may skid on turns or slippery road, the cargo may fall out of the body, the awning may untie, and in general, the trailer may roll over. For me, the theory of the operation of certain things, safety instructions, calculations for the use of various equipment and tools are important. Without knowing what and how works, you can easily get injured, disable equipment and tools, and generally endanger your life and the lives of those around you. Therefore, I have a separate large video about industrial safety, where I cover diverse areas of repair and construction and highlight the importance of integrated approach to safety. There are really a lot of topics that will come in handy in everyday life. And for a more convenient search for the topics, there is a time code. In future videos, I will also touch on the topic of the trailer, but in practice. I will also talk what tools are needed for repairing both the car and the trailer to perform 90% of the tasks that are not related to working on large machines and equipment. Hope you are looking forward for the next video. It was Valeria, the Off-Road Ranch. Wish you all the best and see you soon.